Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching. And today we're gonna to be covering a recent Supreme Court decision that has potentially large implications for you just generally as a citizen, as far as property rights are concerned, but then also how it ties into some of the re recent overreaches that we've seen from executive agencies and specifically what it has to do with your second amendment rights. Hey, before we really get going, shameless self-promotion, I need your help. I need you to push the buttons down below. What those buttons do is signal to the platform that this video is something they should show to somebody else. And you guys have been doing a really good job lately of making sure that this message gets out to more people. So if you haven't already, interact with the video in some way and it definitely helps. Thank you very much. Because we know that the powers that be, especially the ones at YouTube who are the gatekeepers, do not want you and your friends to know that you are winning. Without further ado, the case that we're talking about, actually the decision dropped last week as of the filming in this video, but I don't know when this video is publishing. So yeah, it might be a week later than that. I don't know. But the case is known as Sackett versus EPA. And you're like, Kurt, why are we talking about the EPA? I thought you said this had to do with, with firearms. Bear with me, okay? <laughs> this actually has to do with government overreach and... I don't know, do we know any executive agencies that uh, might be doing some overreach lately? Uh, I don't know, you tell me. So the story sort of goes like this. The Sacketts, a couple out of Idaho, purchase a piece of land in 2004. Notice the date, 2004. That was almost 20 years ago. And they start filling in their property to build a foundation. Well, after three days of working on the property, they get a visit from the EPA and they say, hey, you need to stop work immediately. We think that you're filling in a wetland. And they're like, um, well, you got any proof that we're filling in a wetland? They're like, no, and we don't need to show you proof. So they go through the process and, and they uncover that indeed, it's not actually even listed in the, uh, the map that they have that shows where the wetland officially is. <laughs> and they're like, uh, it's not a wetland. And the EPA says, no, it's it, we're, we're calling it a wetland. So therefore it is a wetland. And they give them a compliance order that carries penalties of up to $40,000 of penalties and fines per day. And the Sackets are basically like, uh, we're, not, we're not playing this game and we're gonna take you to court. So that means they let the fines pile up while they are uh, litigating this case. They go to the district court. The district court says, well, you know, it's not a final agency action, so therefore you aren't actually damaged. The EPA has not actually enforced this on you. They're just threatening to enforce this on you. And they're like, you've got to be kidding. We hired all these experts to come out here and do soil samples and vegetation samples and, and geographic uh, analyses and all that sort of stuff to determine whether it's a wetland. You won't even listen to what we have to say scientifically about the location of our land. And the court's like, nope, you don't have standing. So they're like, so they take it to the, uh, from the district court to the circuit court and the circuit court says, yeah, same thing. Uh, we can't, we can't see you, right? <laughs> because you don't have standing in court. They're like, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. So they take it up to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court grants cert. And then it seems to me like it got knocked back down and then it came back up again. So then they were granted cert under the Administrative Procedures Act. And I don't know, have we heard of anything in recent history where the presiding uh, executive agency has violated the Administrative Procedures Act? Anybody? Now, to be completely clear, I just finished my read of this 80 plus page document and I still have not fully woken up from that experience because it was exceptionally dry. It's full of a whole bunch of gobbledygook about waterways and this experience and that and that uh, historical precedent. And it's, it's pretty bad. I have suffered through this so that you don't have to, but essentially what the Clean Water Act attempted to do was at its base level, a pretty noble thing. I like to go out to the lake and not have to worry about being poisoned by swimming in the lake. 
Like, I think we can all agree that that's a good thing. That act specifically attempted to strike a balance between regulatory powers of the individual states and the federal government and its powers to regulate the quote-unquote waters of the United States. Well, the EPA has latched onto that, and th through a litany of examples, the, the court has found that the EPA has incrementally expanded its definitions arbitrarily to include all manner of things that were not the original intent of Congress to regulate, to the point where if you take it to the level that the EPA supposes to take it, they have jurisdiction over ponds and, and, uh, and ditches that may someday, who knows, uh, feed into said body of water. And the Supreme Court's like, nah, you, you can't be doing that stuff. And they give the example of like, what about a puddle? Do you have jurisdiction over the puddles? They established limits for what the EPA can regulate. And basically to kind of give you the dirty on that is, hey, you can only regulate things that are attached to the waterway. And that if the EPA supposes that they should have the jurisdiction to regulate the things that they think that they should be able to regulate, then they need to get the buy-in of Congress expressly through the legislative process. So unless Congress passes a law that says that you can do this specific thing, then you can't do that. And we're limiting you to these set of criteria for enforcement of the Clean Water Act. All right, Kurt, well, lakes, rivers, streams, puddles, ponds, what does that have to do with guns? Well, you'll remember that the ATF is also an executive agency that has been given a, I hate to use this term, but a mandate from Congress to do a thing. And then that executive agency has built a layer of rules around that thing for administrative activities surrounding that act, that uh, mandate from Congress. And then around that, they build another layer of rules and another layer of rules. And now we've morphed this mandate into a thing that no longer resembles the original intent from Congress. And what this ruling does is basically say, stop. You guys can't make up the rules as you go along. You were given a particular thing to do. You need to stick to the bounds of that thing that you were supposed to do. And if you think that you should have more power to do this thing that you want to do, then you need to go get the express consent of Congress through the legislative process. You need to go get them to pass a law that gives you, that grants you the power to do X, Y, or Z. If you've got any vagueness on whether you have the capacity to do anything, we have to start siding with the plaintiffs because well, what you're doing can drastically impact these people's lives, this, uh, this fining process with the EPA, but also like we're talking about the pistol brace situation, the bump stock situation, et cetera, et cetera, where that's even worse. You can literally go to prison for years upon years, potentially for the rest of your life because the agency decided to just, meh, that thing, we don't like that thing over there. Just look at some of the most recent uh, lawsuits that have been filed. They cite the West Virginia versus EPA uh, case from last year, where the Supreme Court basically said the exact same thing. Says, hey, you're making up the rules as you go along. You can't do that anymore. And we're going to start reining you in. So I hope that you learned something in this video. If you did, then sound off in the comment section down below. And I greatly appreciate you. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this one and how it might be used. And I do encourage you to read it if you're absolutely completely bored. But this is my uh, Cliff Notes or Spark Notes, depending on which generation you're from. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you in another video here at the VSO Gun Channel.